well and uh, a happy Sabbath to everyone of us, wherever we are tuned in and wherever we are watching from. The Lord has been so gracious unto us and he has given us the Sabbath that uh, we may be in his presence and uh, we may be able to worship him. And so happy Sabbath, wherever you are. This uh, uh, evening, I just want to speak of something so brief about uh, why organize? Because uh, this uh, is one of the questions that is asked when uh, you talk about uh, gospel order, organization, and discipline. Uh, you hear people asking, why are you so much into this thing of organization? Why? Why should we organize? Why should all these ministries come together and be able to move us, even if it were possible, one ministry working for the Lord as we wait for the second coming of Jesus Christ. And so I'd like us to pray and then uh, be able to share briefly as uh, we enter into the Sabbath of the Lord. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, glory and honor be unto your name. Lord, we thank you for every good gift that uh, you have given unto us, the gift of life, the gift of the Sabbath, a special time to just have a rest and have fellowship with you and your son and to commune with the numerous uh, angels in Mount Zion, the great uh, general assembly. Father, we rejoice and uh, one day we shall see face to face each other very soon. No one has knows how soon. And so we pray that uh, when that time comes, we may be ready and this fellowship that has started on this earth that it may continue eternally. Glo uh, glory be unto thy name and uh, be with your children as we go through your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, uh, I just want to again thank the Lord for the gift of life. It is uh, important to be alive in this uh, uh, time of the earth history and all that is going around. You get that assurance that uh, the word of God is true and it doesn't lie. And so the visions will speak at the end of the time, though it tarries, wait for it, because it shall speak and it will not lie. And so we are seeing the events of uh, the prophecies unfolding. In fact, I'm convinced uh, from uh, just studying the book of Acts together with the family that uh, we are convinced that Christ is coming. And how do we know that is this? Um, when uh, you read the book of Acts, you get, uh, there were many people who rose up uh, to claim that they were Jesus. And uh, they showed themselves unto the people, but it didn't go so far. During the times of uh, the book of Acts, and then we are told at the end of uh, the days, Matthew chapter 24, the very things that happen in the past will happen again. False Christ shall arise, claiming that they are he, but then know that this must happen and then now uh, the end shall come. And so we are in the midst of this. Uh, those who are watching news, those who are going through the newspapers have seen that uh, there's Jesus Christ in Kenya this John the Baptist in Kenya, they are funny, funny things, but they are not funny at all because uh, this is prophecy being fulfilled and we should be asking instead of laughing, what is uh, the state of my heart? I don't mean in the sense where people actually say, oh, now we have come to the end of the world and uh, you know now I have to fear God, I have to serve him lest I be lost. I'm not talking that kind of uh, examining our hearts. Serving the Lord with fear will never take anyone to heaven. God does not need people who will serve him out of fear. God needs people who will serve him out of love. And if uh, we serve God by fear, then it means that uh, what if he doesn't come in the near future? He'll say, oh, our fathers have spoken about him coming. And then it has been like that until now. So again, you will lose the meaning of uh, serving the Lord because you started with fear. When you start from the wrong foundation, what you end up with is a wrong conclusion. We want to serve God because he loves us, not even because we love him. 
because human love is so imperfect, there is nothing in it. Today it is there, tomorrow it's not there. What we need is to serve God because he loved us. For, so, so, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. If you read uh, in Romans chapter seven, 5, we are told, chapter 5, verses 7 onward, it says that uh, while we were still yet weak, he died for us. And as we are still yet even weak, he is coming for us. I don't say that uh, we continue sinning until Christ is seen in the clouds of the air. Everyone have to decide today if they will serve the devil or they will serve God. You see how people are serving Satan, by the way. They are serving Satan with passion. They are not serving Satan out of fear. So don't serve Jesus Christ out of fear. People are serving Satan. They will do all manner of things, all sorts of things, because they love Satan, not because they fear Satan. I have never seen somebody serving Satan because he hates Satan. People passionately serve Satan because they love the things of Satan. Let us not cultivate this service for Christ because we fear him. No, no, no. How can you give the devil good service and then come to Jesus Christ and what you are offering him is something out of fear and not something of out of qualitative love that uh, he has for us. That is, by the way, I was just saying that this world is coming to an end when we see things happening and people proclaiming themselves they are Jesus, they are proclaiming themselves they are John the Baptist. You know that this world is coming to an end. People are not thinking anymore. People are, uh, I, I can say people are going mental. And if Christ doesn't come, maybe all the world will go mental. I don't know. But uh, let us think about those things. Why organize? People ask, why, why do you push these things so much? Why not just serve God and he will take, the, he will take care of the rest? No, there is a reason why we should organize. We are told that um, a people united, uh, uh, no stronghold of Satan can be able to break up a people who are united with codes of love. But uh, the reason why we speak uh, and personally speak about uh, service, uh, uh, getting organized is because uh, the Lord is, is making up his great army who will uh, speak one thing, who will see eye to eye. And uh, let me just uh, give you a verse. Let me give you a verse as we, we go through this in the book of uh, uh, Isaiah. In the book of Isaiah, we read that uh, there will be a people who shall see eye to eye. Isaiah chapter 52, verses 8, we are told, Thy watchmen shall uh, lift up the voice, with the voice together shall they sing, for they shall see eye to eye when the Lord shall bring again Zion. And so we see that uh, the need for organization is not a need of man, but Isaiah 52 verse eight says that this watchman shall be able to sound the trumpet together. They shall be able to see eye to eye when the Lord bringeth Zion. And you, you read uh, on, in uh, the book of uh, Revelation chapter 14, and verse 1 talks about the lamb standing on Mount Zion with the 144,000, having the father's name um, in their forehead, having the father's seal in their forehead. Now, what is this father's seal in their forehead? In the prayer of uh, Jesus Christ in the book of John chapter 17, he says that they may be one as even uh, we are one. That, that is the idea of organization. So that not one brother should go there speaking this thing and another one is uh, going the other way speaking another thing and the other one is standing here speaking another thing. One plunges forward and pushes or goes with all his energy and another one sits back and just watches thing or pulls them backward. This is not the kind of um, Christianity that we would like to have. We want to have that unity in John chapter 17, and we want to dwell together as brethren, as Psalms 133 says. And then when we do this, we shall be able to give a service which is acceptable. Young men and young women cannot you form companies 
wherever you are and as soldiers of Christ and enlist in the world, putting all your tact and skill and talent into the master's service that you may serve souls from ruin. And so the need of organization is the need of bringing young men and young women together so that uh, there may be companies organized in every church to do this work. And so will the young men and the young women accept the call of Jesus Christ not to run helter skelter here and there, but to come together and be able to plan together. And you know, when I plan and another one plans and we bring together our ideas and share, the Lord sees a people who are preparing to live together in heaven in unity. And so let young men and women and children go to work in the name of Jesus Christ, not envying each other, not uh, uh, esteeming uh, uh, themselves, but uh, preparing one to another. We are told, let love be without simulation, prefer one to another, uh, others uh, 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 above yourself. Can we not form band of workers and have set times to pray together and ask the Lord to give us grace and put forth uh, united action? And, uh, you know, when you read Revelation chapter 17, we find that uh, there's a confederacy against Jesus Christ. And you are seeing these 10 kings come together and give their power to the beast and rule with him for one hour. The whole bands of evil angels and evil men are coming together and putting their resources together so that they may confuse the children of God and make sure that they are not prepared for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Now, if this is how the devil is working. Where has he copied this formula that when people are together, they can be able to do a very great thing? It is in heaven where he was. He saw that the angels were united. The inhabitants of the unfallen world were united. And what he wanted on this earth is Adam and Eve to be united. But look at what happened in Eden. Eve went away from Adam and a little separation brought about sin. And we find that when brothers are pulling apart, there is nothing that comes out of it but uh, fighting, evil surmising, and all manner of stuff which is uh, unchristlike. So the reason for us uh, organizing and being one unit is so that we may be able to successfully fight as an army of the Lord against one enemy, which is the devil. And so another issue why we should get organized is because uh, we are the body of Jesus Christ. And uh, as I have presented in different um, presentations, one person is a leg, another person is a hand, another one is an eye, and then we put all these things together and we form a missionary, uh, a team that uh, is impregnable. The true missionary spirit has been started in churches because people have caught up or Satan has uh, uh, caught up the people in this uh, independent movement where one medical missionary is doing something, they see that they are the best, another one is doing something somewhere. Uh, the gospel worker is saying that uh, I cannot work with the medical missionary because um, I don't think that is the calling and all that stuff. No, churches are dying. And why are they dying? Because we don't see the work of upper room experience happening among us and the unity that Christ prayed for coming to happen. The, uh, the people of God have been deficient in their strength because uh, they have seen the weakness of other brethren and instead of their strength covering the weakness of other brethren, they have been there to stand aloof and say, uh, that is none of us. It is nothing to us if 
these brethren prosper us, or if uh, they don't prosper. And so uh, it pains the heart of Jesus Christ because Christ does not have many churches. He have one church, and that means that this one church, this is a family. Get that very well. The marriage institution was to show the church how it is to behave. Now, you don't find in a family, the husband is running on the opposite left and the wife is running on the opposite right. The children are running on the opposite side. And then at the end of the day, they call themselves a family. If you find such a thing happening, you are not looking at a family, but you are looking at an organization that has brought together the servants of Satan, and they are there to make things, to misrepresent what marriage and the church is. But then if we are told the marriage institution represents Christ and his church, then you will find out that um, a husband is united with the wife. The wife is united with the husband and the children are knit together with the parents. And this forms a family. And we are being told that the church is an extension of that nuclear family. And when things are going well in the family at home, things will be well in the church. And so we can learn from the marriage institution because um, marriage is not uh, an institution where three, two people and with the children come together to run riot against each other, but to unite so that they may uh, uh, be able to create a small uh, uh, heaven on earth. So the church, which is an extension of it, will bring together all these ministries. It will bring together all these people who are endowed with different gifts and they will work as one and not as uh, a disintegrated, uh, as um, uh, a disunited uh, uh, institution. Many of the followers of Christ feel no more burden for souls than do the world. The lust of the eyes, the pride of life, the love of display, the love of ease, and uh, the this attitude of I don't care, I don't care, has made it uh, impossible to have. Uh, an army which is strong to fight the stronghold of the enemy. There are uh, a class among stars who are represented as Meros, where actually they will not come together to do something. They will fold their hands and complain about this and complain about that. And uh, I want us to read something. I want us to read something. This issue to do with self. I want us to look at this and ask ourselves, are we still in the same situation? And uh, I'm reading from uh, Christian Service page uh, 36, paragraph 3. I'm sorry, I won't be able to project, but Christian Service page 36.3. There was presented before me a class who are conscious that they possess generous impulses, devotional feelings, and a love of doing good. Yet at the same time, they are doing nothing. They possess a self-complacent feeling, flattering themselves that if they had an opportunity or were circ circumstanced more favorably, they would, they could and will do a great and good work, but they are waiting the opportunity. They despise the narrow mind of the poor nigger who grudges the small pittance to the needy. They see that he lives for self, that he will not be called from himself to do good to others, to bless them with the talents of influence and of means which have been committed to him to use, not to abuse, nor to permit, to rust or lie buried in the earth. Those who give themselves up to their stinginess and selfishness are accountable for their niggardly acts and are responsible for the talents they abuse. But more responsible are those who have generous impulses and are naturally quick to discern spiritual things 
if they remain inactive, waiting an opportunity they suppose has not come, yet contrasting their readiness to do with the willingness of the niggard and reflecting that their condition is more favorable than that of their mean sold neighbors. Such a deceive themselves. The mere possession of qualities which are not used only increases their responsibility. And if they keep their master's talents unimproved or hoarded, their condition is no better than that of their neighbors for whom their souls feel such content. To them, it will be said, you knew your master's will, yet ye did it not. Now, we are being told that um, selfishness has made brethren not come together. And so this has hindered all the talents that the Lord has given several to his children in different places to work together for good for his church. And so you find that some who have talents have held themselves aloof and they will not join with their neighbors to bless each other, but they'll stand far off and love how the neighbor is poor, how the neighbor is not talented as them. And then they fold their hands. These are accounted as one who was given a talent and hid it in the ground and said, I know master, you reap where you did not sow in the book of Matthew chapter 25. And so when the brethren refuse to come together and organize, it means that the talents, the different talents that the Lord has endowed to different people will not be used for his kingdom. Then somebody may say, now, if that is the case, why should the Lord give that person a talent when he knows that that person has held himself or herself aloof and doesn't want to join brethren? Let me tell you, the ways of the Lord are not the ways of man. And his mind, his thinking and acting is not the same as us. We are prone that when things are not pleasing to us, we cast them aside and we have nothing to do with them. No, that is not how Christ acts. Remember, Jesus Christ had Judas in his company of disciples. And even though Judas originally was not called by Jesus, but uh, pressed himself to Jesus, Christ did not push him aside and tell him, no, 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 I know you are hurt. In the end, you may betray me or such a thing. And so you can have none of the ministry. No, Judas came. And even he was the treasurer. You know, I'm sometimes amazed at this stuff that um, the person whom Jesus Christ knew he will be able to betray him was given the treasury department, the most sensitive uh, 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 department in the gospel ministry. Because if uh, people are giving in tithes and offering and you have a treasurer who is stealing all the money, how will you organize for the work? Maybe somebody may say, Christ didn't need money because he could just go preach, ask the father for the power, and then he can just speak a word, be healed, and the person is healed. He could pull the, the, the crowds without uh, having the posters. But you are not thinking straight. It is detrimental even to Jesus Christ to have had Judas amongst his disciples and give him the post of the treasurer. What am I trying to say? The Lord does not see things the way you see them. And that is why even to that person who is holding himself a look, he has given him a talent. Why? Because the person will not have an, 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 an a case that, Lord, you know, you gave to others, but to me, you didn't give me. And so when I saw you had not given to me, I decided to sit around and do nothing because you gave me nothing. No. God will give every person a talent, whether one, whether two, whether three. They may do whatever they want to do with it, but they will be accountable for it. And so he is distributing these gifts to different people. I'm not a, an able speaker. Somebody is an able speaker. I may not be a teacher. Somebody is a teacher. I may not know administrative roles. Somebody knows that very well. And when all this come together, then they are organized for the service. But one person having the talent of administrative duties, another one having a talent of preaching, another one a talent of teaching, another one a talent of healing, and each one wants to go their way and say, you know, 
I don't need somebody else. I am my own mount, I, I, I'm, I'm an island of my own making. This is what exactly what we have done. And uh, you know, we are being told it is out of selfishness and pride. A brother sees that uh, he is good at uh, doing the work of uh, door to door evangelism. And he says, you know, uh, uh, it is a thinking in their hearts that uh, I will not want anyone to share in this. I want this one to be my whole cake and my whole bread and I bake it and eat it myself. And so I don't want anyone to share in the blessings of going door to door with me uh, because he knows how to pray and I know how to preach. Uh, I, I don't want that. If you want to hold a prayer meetings, let him hold prayer meetings alone, but I'll go door to door alone. And so you find that this kind of uh, spiritual uh, 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 pride has entered into the people, but we should come together and organize and be able to share this talent so that the work may be done and uh, the people may be able to sound a loud cry. And uh, God's people must give a warning. They must sound the trumpet with a certain note. But uh, here is a brother sounding a trumpet like this, another brother there sounding a trumpet like that, and another one just sit, seated there and watching how things roll. The work of Christ shall never be finished in this work. He says that unite in unity, there is strength, and uh, it's uh, a bond that cannot be broken easily with the enemy. And so, uh, Satan is now seeking to hold God's people in a state of inactivity and in a state of division because he knows that if he divides them, they will never be able to fight the enemy, but they will be fighting for themselves. Think, for, think that for a moment. The reason why the devil is dividing people is so that they may not come together to fight a common enemy, but they may fight amongst themselves. Don't you think sometimes the devil is wiser than us? The reason he doesn't want us to organize is because he knows that if we organize, we will say, this is our enemy. And then we shall face the enemy with a united front and be able to finish the work. But now he will let us disorganize, have this disunity. And then the next thing that follows, it's not to fight against the enemy, but to fight against ourselves. Now, here are people who are wanting to go to heaven, but fighting against each other, which means that heaven is not a place for them. The people who are fighting, they were thrown from heaven. But here on earth, there are people who are fighting and they think that that is a ladder to heaven. How, how, what a great blindness and deception has come upon the church of God in this Laodicean state. They know very well Satan brought war in heaven and then he was thrown down. But they would want to fight and then climb the ladder to heaven. Men are in peril of thinking that uh, heaven can host a people who are disunited. How few of the professed followers of Christ are burdened for the common enemy and the common work that should be done, the saving of souls. Much is spent on trivial matters, much is spent on debate, much is spent on unbalanced things and hardly will they make two steps ahead. They make one step ahead and just go back five steps behind. There is lack of that love which led Christ to leave his heavenly home and take man's nature that humanity might touch humanity and draw humanity to divinity. There is a stupor, a paralysis upon the people of God which prevents them from understanding the duty of the hour and the duty of the hour, what is it? Watchman on the wall of Zion. Sound the trumpet. And so this issue of sounding the trumpet, we find that um, in the typical sanctuary, there were different trumpets for different occasions. And suppose that um, it was a trumpet for harvest time. And then somebody sounded a trumpet for the day of atonement. 
think what kind of confusion will be there for the children of Israel who had gathered about the sanctuary. And so without this unity, without consultation, without um, uh, 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 brethren coming together and uh, 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 sitting around the table and uh, looking unto the things which pertains to this time, you will find that one is sounding the trumpet for the harvest and another one is sounding a trumpet for the day of atonement. And who knows, another is sounding the trumpet for the first fruits. And you wonder, are these people of the same church or these people are uh, coming from uh, different churches and they don't understand what should be done at this hour? First Chronicle chapter 12, verse 32 says, of the children of Issachar who understood the times and what ought to be done, the number of them were 200 and the, their brethren were at their command. There need to be a people who understand the times that we are living in. In fact, we are in the great day of atonement, the day of at one man, where people are being reconciled. Everything is being gathered up unto Christ. And everything that is not being gathered up unto Christ is being prepared to be cut off from Christ. And so if the work of the high priest is to bring everything together, that is Jesus Christ, to gather everything unto himself and reconcile men to God so that they may be one with God. How about those who are being gathered together? Should not their purpose be like that one of the priests, which is at one man, to be of one accord and to move as a unit? And so Satan sees the variant that is amongst us and uses the listless, sleepy indolence of professed Christian to strengthen his forces and win souls to his side. As they are fighting, he is gathering them in the banner to bring them together and burn them in the bundle. Many who think that though they are doing no actual work for Christ, they are yet on his side and are enabling the enemy to preoccupy ground and gain advantage. By their failure to be diligent workers for the master, by leaving duties undone and words unspoken, they have allowed Satan to gain control of souls who might have been one for Christ. And uh, we find that uh, um, when we are not coming together to unite and do the work that should be done, we may say, I'm not part of this. Then, in other words, what we are saying, and I'm on the part of Satan. For if we sit in this listless, intolerance, disunited spirit, we are not winning souls to Christ. And if we are not winning souls to Christ, guess what is happening? We have only two roads. The road to heaven, where people are being won to Christ, and the road to hell, where people are getting on the side of Satan. So you cannot say, I'll sit on the fence, and that is where I'll be. You are on either the road to heaven or the road to hell. If you are not doing something for the kingdom of Christ, it doesn't matter how many excuses you give, you are doing something for the kingdom of Satan. And so when the burden of souls is lost and the brethren turn against each other and they will not move as a unit, they are not doing the work of winning souls to Christ. And if they are not doing the work of winning souls to Christ, then they are doing the work of scattering or they are helping the enemy to be able to gather his uh, 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 fall together. And so uh, the church should get alarmed and fear about the sleep that has come over it. The marks of distinction between Christ professed people and the world have almost disappeared. And, uh, you know, we, we look around the world and look at the world lens. And uh, sometimes people give this, uh, uh, this, uh, this example of the drunkards that uh, these drunkards are people who are so united in what they are doing. The, the drunkard will sleep hungry at home, but he will never miss uh, uh, alcohol. 
when he shows up where people are drinking, they give him a drink. And then this is how Satan works. And we know this is not uh, per se some, some unity, but uh, at the same time, it's unity in, unto evil. But you come to the Christians and you see how they treat each other. And then you say, oh, the drunkards are better. It, it will be so bad for the people of God to be compared to Christ, uh, to be contrasted with the, the drunkards. And so the issue is that um, when we stand aloof from each other, the world seems better in a better position than the church of God. And then not only, and not only in the world do we see the result of the church neglect to work in Christ's line, but this neglect, but this neglect, a condition of things have been brought into the church that has eclipsed the high and holy interest of the work of God. A spirit of criticism and bitterness has come into the church and the spiritual discernment of many has been dimmed because of this, the cause of Christ has suffered a great loss. When people are not united, a spirit of bitterness comes amongst them and the second commandment on the table of stones is lost sight of. Now, what is the second commandment? The second commandment is that thou shalt love thy neighbor as you love thyself. And then, to make these hard lines that uh, uh, we cannot come together and work just for the sake of uh, standing aloof and no one has uh, 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 really wronged you. Actually, it is, uh, we are being told it is uh, making void of the second commandment on the table of stones. And so the Lord is, the Lord has not closed heaven to us, but our course of con continual back backsliding has uh, separated us from God. And the children of the, the professed children of God are filled with pride, covetousness, love for the world, and the love for self. And they live for self and not live for others. Grievous and presumptuous sins has dwell, been dwell, has, have dwelt among us, and yet the general opinion is that the church is flourishing and that uh, peace and pros spirit, spiritual prosperity are in all our borders. But uh, the church has left following Christ, her leader, and is steadily retreating toward Egypt. And so we, we see that. Uh, when people don't feel alarmed or astonished at their want of spiritual power, you find that uh, it doesn't matter what their profession is. It doesn't matter what their uh, 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 act of faith is or their beliefs. These are not working for Christ. What has brought about all this spiritual weakness? Because love for one another have died among them. And uh, 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 the, 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 the condition, the state of uh, one pushing the other side and another pushing the other side has brought about uh, a state where truth cannot go forward. For the world beholds the differences between those who are professing the truth and us are these the ones whom we are to join and be like them. You know, when uh, brethren are... Uh, stand against each other and yet they will want to win the people of the world to the church the people ask now all these people are seventh day adventists all these people are calling themselves christian and if this is how they are behaving will they not tear us apart will they not uh, 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 tear each other because of us also and so you find that uh, the gospel can not go on the forefront, uh, on the front with the power that is needed because of the constant, the constant difference between professed brethren. And so as uh, I conclude this, what do we need? I'm reading from uh, Christian Service, page 39, paragraph two. <clears throat> the churches need to have their eyes, their eyes anointed. 
with the heavenly ISIL that they may see the many opportunities all about them to minister for God. Repeatedly, God has called upon his people to go out into the highways and hedges and compel men to come in, that his house may be full, yet even within the shadow of our own doors are families in which we have not shown sufficient interest to lead them to think that we cared for their souls. It is this work lying nearest us that the Lord now calls upon the church to undertake. We are not to stand saying, who is my neighbor? We are to remember that our neighbor is the one who needs our sympathy and help. Our neighbor is every soul who is wounded and bruised by the adversary. Our neighbor is everyone who is, in the, who is the property of God. In Christ, the distinctions made by the Jewish as to who was their neighbor are swept away. There are no territorial lines, no artificial distinction, no caste, no aristocracy. Christian service, page 39, paragraph 2. And so this fanatism and cold formalism should die amongst the brethren who are waiting for Jesus Christ. We have become moral icebergs in our churches. Think about that. We have become moral icebergs in our churches. If uh, we remain in the state that we are, if we are not organizing to win souls unto Christ, then we are disorganized to win them or to scatter them to the devil. And this is a uh, uh, prison to the name Christianity because if we call ourselves Christians and we are not gathering but scattering, then we are doing a disservice to the kingdom of God. The reason why God's people are not more spiritual minded and have no more faith, I have been shown in because they are narrowed up with selfishness. Now, you understand that uh, the greatest battle to be ever waged is the battle against self. This is the, great, but the greatest battle that uh, we have to contend with. It is not until the church will be converted that the Lord will work in it. And we are told in uh, evangelism, is it page 110? The reason why God is not bringing in many is because of the church members who have never been converted and the church members who were once converted, but they have backslidden. So the Lord is not working to bring in many. And uh, it will continue like this until the end of the time. And uh, we may think that uh, we are doing a great service to God when we stand aloof from each other. But uh, we are told lastly that uh, the Lord is testing a people on this earth to see that there shall be no uh, another rebellion in heaven. And you can find that also in Nahum 1.9, that um, what you have thought of the Lord, he shall bring it to an utter end and sin shall rise no more. And, uh, you know, what is sin essentially? Sin is uh, the breaking of the law of God, but uh, deeply, if we go into that, sin is, again, separation from God. And uh, there is no way we can say that we are being reconciled and uniting with God when we are continually separating from one another. For how can you say, we are asked, that uh, how can you say that um, you love the Lord when you hate your neighbor? How can you say you love God and uh, you hate your neighbor? One John chapter four, verses twenty. The letters of John. The letter of John. First letter of John, chapter 4, verse 20, say, Whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. For whosoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. And uh, you find that uh, all of us, we are professing that we love the Lord. But then the people who are working in the same field with us and the we people who are working for souls are like us and whom we call our neighbors, we can't see eye to eye. We can't unite together and do our work for the Lord. And so 
The question asked again, as I began, why organize? It is organization for the gospel work. This organization will root out every covetousness and selfishness in us. It will be a means of us seeing our defects, of seeing our imperfectness, of seeing our weaknesses and accept them and also recognize others that they can be used of God. And when we all bring all these talents together and we be one body under the head, which is Jesus Christ, the work will be finished. We will be a great army and we will go to the war and uh, we shall fight the common enemy and we shall stop fighting one another. And the door in which the devil finds opportunity to perplex the church is the door of disorder. If we close this door of disorder, then Satan will not find a door to come in and perplex the church. And so may we think about these things and may Christ uh, 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 take all selfishness from our hearts that uh, we may be united to do a service for him with uh, our all affection uh, upon our brethren and uh, esteeming others more than we esteem uh, ourselves. And uh, may the Lord bless us and have a happy Sabbath wherever you are. And may you think about these things if they are so. And if they are so, may you pray the Lord that uh, we shall have one spirit and we shall see eye to eye, as we have been told in the book of Isaiah, that the watchmen shall be able to see eye to eye and they shall sound the trumpet as the Lord gathers his people uh, in Zion. Shall we close with the word of prayer? Glory and honor be unto thee, heavenly Father. We again say thank you because you are giving us opportunities to be saved. We haven't done anything good that uh, will warrant us to be in heaven. But Lord, thou hast seen it fit to send your son to die for us and uh, give us another probation so that we may be reconciled unto thee. Help us to use this opportunity not to serve you in fear, but to serve you out of love. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.